Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 10. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Emilio Daniel. Yo, what's up, boss? Hello there, Emilio. How was your day? My day sucked. Oh, really? Oh. What happened? Well, um, let's see. Uh, my tenant from my apartment ran away without paying for the rent for that month. And he left a bunch of stuff in the house, which led me to have to clear up the entire house myself for an entire day. Thank you very much, tenant. Well, at least you can sell those stuff on eBay. Yeah, that's what I'm planning to do. Okay, anyway, we have a special guest host today. Let's introduce Daniel Anthony. What's up, guys? Hello, how are you and how was your day? Oh, my day was pretty good. We had a little mini meetup in the afternoon with uh, one of our members. Oh, that's good. Was it the Cantalot Campus meetup? Uh, no, it was actually an MPS meetup with, um, if you know, Alex Yambang. He came over from Bintulu just to visit and hang around. So we decided to just go and hang out with him, just five of us. Oh, that's great. Pretty fun. The nice little meetup. Very cozy. So who joined you guys? Uh, it was Ian and uh, Asman and James. Oh, no Aaron? Nope. That's a surprise. You know, I expected him to say yes and turn up. I think he's at a car show with the Porsche and everything. Really? Yeah, that's why I saw on Facebook. Anyway, um... Uh, on to our guest for this week, we have Anastasia Irina, or Tash for short. <laughs> Anastasia Irina, hey! So, Hi! What's up, pony? <laughs> so, how was your day? Oh, it was a tiring day. <laughs> but it's good, all in good fun. We had, because um, I'm studying in Australia, as some of you might know, and we had a meetup here in Melbourne today. It was a museum meetup, so that was pretty fun. Lots of bronies. I think that was about 30, 40 of us. What? Wow, that's a lot. We haven't even yeah, had that. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Stop right there. You met up in a museum. Why? Why a museum? Because it's cheap. <laughs> oh, God. It was, it, it's free for students. Oh. It's free for students. Um, right. Tash, Tash, next yeah. time when somebody asks a question like that, you should answer, why not? Well, why not? But also because, like, yeah, it's free. Hey. And we like free things. <laughs> Who doesn't wear Malaysian? True. <laughs> Pretty much. You know, my dad once said that a Malaysian will drive and spend five ringgit worth of gas to get something that's free that's worth only about three bucks. <laughs> True that. So, before we start the show, we have to ask Tash for important questions. Um, let's try and make it brief because um, this is not the first time. Partly my fault. But anyway, who's your favorite pony? Pinkie Pie! Woohoo! Favorite episode? Favorite episode. I said baby cakes. Yes. Want to change that? Well, thing is, that would be one of the favorite episodes. Is when you watch your- ponies... You is can't that, choose. Yeah. It's like, all of them are awesome. Why does with... that simply choose a favourite episode? Exactly. <laughs> is, is that your final answer? Yes, the episode chooses me. <laughs> you seriously just with reference who wants to be a millionaire? No, I reference Slumdog Millionaire. Every time that line comes to my nose, uh, who wants to be a millionaire doesn't come to mind, I think of Adil Kapoor. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, how did you became a brony? Oh, uh, well, once upon a time, I was a student. <laughs> and I was procrastinating. Still I'm still a student, um, sadly. But <laughs> I was basically procrastinating, as most students do. So I came upon this YouTube video about a guy who did his physics presentation based on My Little Pony. And that sort of sparked my interest. I actually sat through the whole thing and thought, Oh, this is pretty cool. What is this My Little Pony thing? And I looked it up and watched the first two episodes and basically just spiraled down into bronydom after that. I really the- yeah, I saw that physics presentation and I was like, man, I wish I could do that. Trouble is I don't study physics anymore. Well, I, I wish I was still in school or whatever kind of education system so I can do a brony presentation. You don't need to be in school for that. <laughs> just walk into a classroom. <laughs> I'm actually doing an essay okay. at uni now about bronies, oh, like okay. the fandom and the derpy hoof situation, so that should be interesting. Are you going to present it on stage or in the front of the classroom or something like that? No, no, it's just for my professor to read, ah. but I'll be getting feedback on that, so that should be interesting. Okay. So will you be starting like the International Journal of Bronyism or something like that? <laughs> yeah, maybe, who knows, if that's an interest. What do your family and friend think about your love for the show? They roll with it. I, I'm pretty individualistic as it is so i've always been a big pop culture fan i don't think they find this too surprising honestly speaking and i have a younger sister and she's pretty much like the only other brony in the house so whenever i go look at pony things she'll come along with and then she'll be like oh yeah i want this one can you buy me this and that i buy her pony things 
and send it over back to Malaysia. So it's pretty fun. Bit of sisterly bond going on there. Nash. Yes. Can I become your little sister? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could totally put a bow on you. Aww. I can see that happening. He already is wearing a bow in his profile picture. <laughs> Artist. I have a bow tie too, by the way. Twinsies! Oh my Ooh. gosh! You need to have that apple bloom bow. <laughs> okay, artist, draw Emilio wearing a bow. Now. Oh my god. Don't you mean Emilia? <laughs> <laughs> I like it! Oh, I'm a girl now! My dreams have come true! I don't want to know what you dream about. Anyway, uh, let's start off the show. Okay, moving on to housekeeping. Well... Looks like our host, Norman Sanzo, is a lot more like Derpy Hoos than we think. In the last episode, he thanked Michael for correcting the website's header, but it was actually supposed to be Michelle. So we're very sorry, Michelle, on behalf of our Derpy Hoos. Michelle, I'm really sorry. I'm bad with names and they don't call me Derpy for nothing. Hey, I don't even remember my girlfriend's name, so that's okay. <laughs> on the bright side... The MBS show website just hit 1,000 hits. Yay! Like a shy gang. Yay. Yay. Yay, I was Later! surprised. Yay! Yay! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I can tell this episode is going to be great. Anyway, um, I'm surprised. We hit 1,000. Woohoo! Hey, Woo-hoo. congrats on the achievement. Yay. Yeah. I wish it was 1,000 like muffins. This is the 10th episode. Woohoo! So that means we get 100 hits per episode. Not bad. In today's news topic, Season 2 Reference and Parody Guide. Sometimes when you watch the show, you may notice some stuff and ask yourself, where have I seen that before? Well, if you have, those are called reference and parodies. A YouTube user by the name of Saberspark has made a video listing out most of the reference and parody that are in Season 2. Links to the video could be found in the show notes. So from what I've seen of the video, it lists out most of the parodies and reference guide. So what do you guys think? There were a uh, lot of have... references and parodies in that season, so I was like, that's going to be a long video, isn't it? Not much, not really. Um, did you know that there was a lot of the Ring reference? What? Oh, no, I didn't yeah. know at all. The video is about five minutes long, so it's trying to squeeze everything inside. Yeah, most of them. Like, um, the lot of the Ring reference was the Eye of Sorin. Sorin, Sorin, oh, right? I of Sauron, Sauron, yeah. yeah. Sauron. The Eye of Sorin, when it was in one of the background pictures for um, Night... Sorry. Nightmare Night. Yeah, Nightmare Night. What was the episode Luna called? Lunar Eclipse. Yeah, sorry. it was in that episode. Yeah, and it's the Eye of so- Sauron, not Sorin. Sorin's a Wonderbolt. Sauron. Yeah. <laughs> Sauron, yeah. It's, Why does not Sauron. simply mistake his name? Yeah, it, it was that one. And there was a Mortal Kombat pony. Mortal Kombat! Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Oh, I see it. <laughs> In my head now, I can't see it. <laughs> but you suddenly you get mind blown. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of reference. I mean, people who love to... Pokemon Punch. <laughs> <laughs> Where? Gotta catch them all. In, in, the, in the finale, when... The changes oh. all got blown away and it was like the star... Team, was that the Team Rocket thingy? Yeah. yeah. Team Rocket's blasting up again! I, didn't, I couldn't make the association. Really? Yeah, I mean, I'm not that much into Pokemon, but still. <laughs> In the next topic, My Little Pony Bullet Hell Game. Recently, a fan-made My Little Pony video game was made available for download. The game was called My Little Pegasus Kizuna do Pony Pachi. The game is based on a game called Don Pachi, a very popular top-down vertical shooter game. So mm. our gaming residents, Emilio, will try and say something about it. I've tried some bullet hell games in my olden days. They're known to be quite hard, aren't they? <laughs> it's like, has anyone actually tried this? And it's like, what's the level of difficulty? I tried it. It's really simple. You just move left and right, shoot, and try not to get hit by bullets. Yeah, okay. it's basically that. But to criticize the game, its graphic is not that great, but... Here's the thing, I see potential in this game because even though it looks bad, but it's really fun. Okay. You know how games like, um, I'm going to insult a lot of people, but games like Patapon or Loco Roco, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, they, they don't look really good, right, for the price you pay, Yeah. but it's hell of a fun game, right? Yeah, I, I guess in the end, we, what we want is a really a fun game. And true that, but this is fun. You got Rainbow Dash shooting and Fluttershy shooting too. Oh, whoa, whoa, Fluttershy shooting, wow. Aww. Yeah, I mean... That sounds pretty epic. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun game and it's available for download. You should try. <laughs> there goes my time. 
and it's fun. Seriously, it's fun. Ah, okay. How's the music? I was like, I- I'm really interested. Oh, well, from what I can tell, this game is made by one person, so the music is okay. It's not oh. that great. It won't make you remember most of the stage level songs, but it's fun. That's all I have to say. Okay, it's a bit unrelated, but there has been a lot of bullet hell style games coming out recently on Newgrounds, especially. Like, if anyone has been on Newgrounds for a longer time, you'll remember this series called Epic Battle Fantasy. Just look it up later. Like, trust all me, right. guys, you're gonna love that game. But anyway... Uh, they did a sidetrack version of the game where it was a bullet hell style game, and, and I, I noticed the trend now is bullet hell game. So, I don't know, maybe we'll see another one of these, because I, I think there's another group planning to make a similar game like this. Yeah, I think it's our group, right? We interviewed them on episode 2. Yeah, yeah, it, and th- this is a bullet hell style game too, right? Yes, yeah, true. Yeah, it is. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, that's our topic for today, and time to go into guest time. In today's guest time, our guest is Anastasia Irina, or Tash for short. She's a local Bruni cosplayer and aspiring fanfic writer. Listen to her talk about how she got started with cosplaying and maybe you can too learn a thing or two from her. <laughs> oh, I'm so touched. Hey. By the way, it's pronounced Anastasia. <laughs> Anastasia. There's a Metallica song that, that has that name in it. Really? Really? Yeah, it's called Anastasia Pulling Teeth. <laughs> Seriously, it was like I, I, the whole time I since I met you, it was just me thinking of that Metallica song. Like, yeah, <laughs> awesome! I feel so loved now, yeah. even though I don't listen to Metallica song. <laughs> okay, back to talking about Tash. Okay, anyway, Tash. Um, so yeah. we asked you four basic questions in the beginning. So let's grill you more with another six question from us. Oh no! Run and hide. <laughs> okay, oh, it's all good. I'll start off first. So, um, when did you start writing fanfic? When did I start writing fanfic? Well, because I basically studied English literature and creative writing in uni. Mm-hmm. And the writing thing j- is just something that I'm interested in. I've always been a big of, of a writer. And fanfic was something I started in December. But as with most things that I start, it's kind of hard to finish it off. So well, the hardest part is to start usually, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's mm-hmm. also the starting and then the continuing it. Ah, <laughs> uh-huh, yes. That's the other thing. And I I think it was like three months ago since my last update with the fanfare. Oh, okay. So anyway, um, what motivates you to writing? What motivates me to write? Um, well, basically what inspires me, sometimes it's just like with the only fanfic that I've actually done so far, The it's called Apple Bloom's uh, Solo Adventure. And what inspired me was the fact that it would be interesting to put Apple Bloom in a situation where she was on her own, away from her family, discovering new things. And I thought, oh, that would be cool. And so I thought of, of the, the different scenario and the whole storyline was just thing in my head and I'm like oh my god that sounds awesome I have to write this down I read your story and it was really good and interesting I like how it started up and then I like how it went to part 2 oh thank you <laughs> but I want more it's like hanging there by the way is it a comedy or grim dark or sad um, it's like a mix of comedy adventure there's a there's a family element to it as well but you'll see more of that popping in later on and I just updated it like two days ago oh really so, what's out chapter 3 is up yay <laughs> I, usually, I usually prefer to read when it says complete but I might check it out now that you say you know, are there like individual adventures oh there's not individual adventures it's continuous but I see, I there's see. a bit of like a cliffhanger at every point that I like to put in there just mm. so people will be like oh what happens next ah I see because when I read an incomplete fanfic, I never finish it. Uh. And I read it and like, that's it. Uh, what now? Yeah. yeah you have well, to wait six you'll months. you'll find mine like, interesting enough to want well, to I'll, I'll be sure to check it out. I'm waiting. Now that it's out, I might go look at it again. Yay! Because, you know, <laughs> I, if I go to film fiction, I always look for sad fics. I don't know. I like to read sad fics. Oh, what? Sad fics make you cry. They <laughs> always make me cry. On to the next question. So how long does it take for you to finish a fanfic? Uh, as you can see, it's not finished yet. <laughs> have you have you finished one before? Uh, a fanfic? Yeah. Oh, well, it's funny because this is like the first MLP fanfic that I've done, but I've written a few fanfics for oh. different fandoms. 
I think it was more like how long does it take to finish one chapter? One, yeah, one, how long does it take to finish one chapter? It usually depends on how motivated I am to actually write and if the storyline is constantly changing or not in my head. Like with chapter three, it took a while to actually get into different directions because I was thinking, okay, what if Apple Blue met this person or should this happen first and then that happened later on because I basically got the whole plot in my head already. Like the arching, the arch and everything. It's all there. It's just that I need to get it out. But then ideas come along the way as well and it changes everything. I guess per chapter, it probably takes me about a week if I'm really motivated. Oh. So yes, if more people start reading my fanfic and say, we want more, I'll be more best to put things up. <laughs> so you know what to do. Go and read Tasha's fanfic. The link is in the show notes. When you write the fanfic, is it canon to the show? Is it canon to the show? Or does it take place in any canon to the show? Uh, like a well, English. yes, something like that. Or any OCs you put in? OCs. Uh, you put in OCs to help drive the plot? OCs to help drive the plot. Well, yeah. Basically, most of the, quite a few of the characters that I put in are OCs, like characters that I came up with on my own, that sort of thing, because for the setting itself, it requires more OCs than ponies that already exist. And it's always fun, like, creating OCs and, like, setting up the image that would be in a different setting, and it's easier for fans of MLP to see themselves in that setting as well. So they're not uh, any Mary Sue and Gary Sue, right? Uh, no, hopefully not. No, no, I don't just put <coughs> characters in there for the sake of it. It's like, they all have a certain purpose in there. That's how I write my stories, basically. Okay, so, uh, like, uh, at this, I'm actually honestly really curious, but... When did you start cosplaying? When did I start cosplaying? That's a very good question. Um, I think, well, I'm not a hardcore cosplayer. I don't like sew my own costumes, that sort of thing. Uh, you don't? Mine is basically just grabbing things from what I already have or shopping for things and putting outfits together. Okay. Uh, so I started in 2007. Uh, oh. It started at, what is, uh, Comic Fiesta. My oh. first Comic Fiesta, I dressed up as, like, a spider lady. And that was interesting. Ooh. So I thought that was a really interesting experience. I'm like, oh, this is cool. I get to play someone else. And then it just started from there. And now when I'm here, I just cosplay pony characters. So when did you do your first pony cosplay? My first pony cosplay actually took place last year at Armageddon. That was my first, like, big brony meet ever, actually. And I thought, like, oh my god, there are bronies! This is so awesome! (laughs) And I basically just went crazy and, like, thought up of the whole concept of a Pinkie Pie cosplay. I thought, okay, I'm pretty much, like, set on balloons. I'll carry balloons around with me. And in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I want to give out candy. So I bought candy to give out to people. Oh, that is so cool. And I had, um, basically most of the things in my wardrobe were already very pinky-like. But I went out and got the wig and everything. Took a bit of effort, but it was it was all in good fun. Everyone just, like, had tons of fun as I gave out candy and things. <laughs> Yay, everybody loves free candy. Of course, uh, yeah. That's why, that's why when you did the same thing when you went at Comic Fiesta Malaysia that year, um, when I did my first cosplay as Surprise, I was like, oh gosh, she's professional. <laughs> Well, <laughs> sure you were surprised back then, eh? For 10 years or something. <laughs> it's like, no, I haven't. Like, it's like, you have to remember, everybody loves free candy, but everybody doesn't love free diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone loves balloons as well. So what kind of characters do you like to cosplay as? I mean, as you said, recently you do a lot of body cosplay, but how about before that? You know, what makes you choose that character? I haven't really done that much cosplay, to be honest. Before ponies, what did I do before ponies? I don't think I did anything in between that time. It was just, I couldn't decide what I wanted to cosplay as, so I went as that. And then when ponies came about, I'm like, oh, this is awesome, I'll just cosplay as ponies from now on. (laughs) Then uh, what made you choose Pinky for your first? Because I'm basically a living Pinkie Pie. Have you guys not heard me? (laughs) (laughs) Pinkie Pie is my soul pony. It's like, we're meant to be. We can tell. <laughs> I did surprise because I was like, Pinkie, but I wanted to be... My, my hipster side was more <laughs> prominent. <laughs> That's good to know. Stay true to your hipster side. <laughs> yep. So how long does it take you to finish constructing a costume, you know what I mean? Because really, if you're into cosplay and you build your costume yourself, how long does it take you to finish designing a costume or creating one? Creating one? Um... Like your recent Derpy Wolf's costume, how long did it take you to put that together? (laughs) This is going to make me sound like such an amateur. But basically, I had an idea in my head of, okay, 
because Derpy is grey, just basically finding grey things to wear and I went out and got the wings because the wings would make it a lot more distinct. Mm-hmm. So when I got wings and it's really hard to find silver wings or silver grey wings. So I ended up buying one and painting it myself. Oh, I would do that. And it's funny because I was planning on just doing it by myself, but my housemate and my sister who was here visiting basically said like, oh, it's okay, we'll help you. So it took a lot quicker than I thought. Yay! Oh, okay. Family and friends make things go faster. Yes. Friendship is magic. That's ah! right. Friendship is magic. <laughs> and the wings... Well, the thing about pony cosplay is that you have the option of if you want to do the ears as well. And to me, I never thought of doing the ears because I just thought it looked a bit unnatural because it's meant to be like a humanized version. How did you do the eyes? (coughs) The eyes? The derpy eyes? Yeah, the derpy eyes. That was really, really convincing. Oh, that was just me. um, Wait, (laughs) did somebody whack you in the head with a stick? No, that was... No, no one did anything. That was just me posing for the camera. I could basically just do that all the time if you ask me to on command. <laughs> Hidden talent right there. We have to watch more YouTube 3D without glasses. <laughs> Cross our eyes every day. Well, that's the thing though. If you keep doing that too often, I think it results in double vision. Yeah. <laughs> it's just not a good thing. <laughs> well, Tash, next time when we meet, I want you to do that live. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> okay, on to the MBS member questions. Mofes asks, what is your opinion on the brony fandom? What is my opinion on the brony fandom? As in in general or...? Uh, yeah, I think general, he asks. And just in general? I think the brony fandom, like when I first joined, it was still on the uprising sort of thing. I think I joined like last year, about September. Mm. and August, September around that. And... It was still growing and expanding. It's really amazing how much user-generated content just comes out from the Brony fandom. It's amazing because I've never felt a big a part of a fandom as much as a Brony. And even just like through social media and everything, everyone's just so connected. And yeah, it's really good. But I guess there's like, a, like there's the pros and cons of it as well. You have the people hating on the show and the fandom just because we tend to seem a bit obnoxious sometimes with trying to press our opinions on everyone else. So yeah, it just it just depends on where you're coming from. But generally, I love the Brony fandom. It's amazing. All the content is amazing. Bronies just never fail to surprise me with like all the things that they can come up with. I love the user generated content from the fandom. You'll keep it alive years from now, you know. Probably when we have kids and something like that, and they'll be like, Dad, what are you watching? <laughs> I'm watching My Little Pony Son. Now, I'll sit with Daddy and... I'll all my pony merchandise. I'll be like, this is my treasure trove to you, my and I'll be like, sit down. You're going to watch this with me. <laughs> no! <laughs> it's like, it's old school. <laughs> you, can, you can thank me later. And then then your kid will say, Man, G8 is much better than G4. <laughs> G8, oh my gosh. Uh, no, Mutant no, no. That'd that probably be like 3D CGI. On to the second question. Share with us the ups and downs of being a girl in a men's majority fandom. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a good question. Well, She, she feels hard. <laughs> I bet you she feels hard. <laughs> what do you mean I feel hard? Just... Being a girl makes me automatically hot. Is that the thing? It's like you're a a beacon of... (laughs) Control (laughs) yourself, Emilio. Must control. (laughs) Wow, I'm so fed right now. (laughs) You... you, Mm. Yeah? Never mind. (laughs) I lost my train of thought. It's like we're trying to say it, but we're trying to hold that at the same time. (laughs) Well, being a girl in a... Well, because... Brony itself implies like very male dominated fandom. Yes, but but I don't know. All the guys seem quite welcoming. I don't know if that has to do with the fact that I'm a girl or if that's just me being friendly sort of thing. But everyone's really nice, and I guess it's like at some point I can't tell if they're like nice to me because I'm a Brony or if they're nice to me because they think I'm available and ready to mingle sort of. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's because yeah, in general we are looking at a fandom that was designed for girls, not designed for guys. On to the next question. <laughs> um, 
And then there's only one answer for this. You get it wrong, I'm going to kick you out. <laughs> Brony or Pegasisters? Brony or Pegasister? Brony, duh! Oh, thank God. <laughs> why not, Pegasister? Just asking, why not? No offense, but Pegasister sounds a bit like... Sexist. It makes me sound like a sissy. I'm like, Brony sounds more inclusive to me. And it doesn't matter if you're a girl or a guy. You're a bro, basically. Yeah, it's like a so, Brony! Bro, if you don't say Pega, bro. <laughs> true, true dad. Just putting, yeah. just putting that out there. You don't say Pega, bro. If you don't say Earth, bro, for whatever it is. You go, bro. I go hoof bump because that's what Pinky calls it. <laughs> hoof yes, bump, too. That works. True dad. But the thing is, the name Brony came from the website 4chan with its B bulletin board. So it came from that. So it's B and pony. So just add in the word bro, me. Are you yeah. serious? Yes. It, came from the, it, it wasn't because uh, of bro and pony. It was B. There's also another name for us. It's cult. The cult thing came from the 4chan board too on the, their C co oh, uh, board. Oh gosh, wow. So <laughs> my, my mind's been blown right now. So every time when I hear somebody say, Oh man, it was it's like us bros, man. Like, we're brothers. Like, so bro and ponies. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> I always get pissed off. Like, that's not... That is voice right there. And like I was saying, it's not right. It's It came from the B-Bulletin board. And like, ah. Okay, yeah. That's, well, putting it out there, it came from the B-Bulletin board. That makes it all the better. Because then it's not, it's not associated with guys. It's just like, just from the B-Bulletin board. And so why can't girls be bronies too? <laughs> and the fun thing is about this one, it's already been covered on that oh, Know Your Meme. I don't ah, yeah. watch Know Your Meme, sadly. Although I love Cheeseburger, I haven't watched it. <laughs> Actually, you should look at uh, the brony thing. It's really cool. I, I see that. It's really awesome and informational, actually. <laughs> yes, indeed. So anyway, um, here's a question for us. Your prediction on Season 3? Someone I... gets their cutie mark! <laughs> <laughs> oh! Yeah, it'll be some other pony in the schoolroom which we've never heard of. <laughs> okay, so uh, some let... pony in the CMC specifically ah, will get yes. like cutie mark. Okay, anyway, let's uh, run it down. Tash, what's your prediction? You can have three answers for this. Okay, some pony in the CMC will get that like cutie mark. That's my first one. Okay. Um, Applejack will get a song. Please, please, Applejack will get a song. <laughs> okay. Applejack is Daniel Ingram's favourite pony. Indeed. Why do you have no song for your own favourite pony, Daniel Ingram? Exactly. Why? <laughs> and, let's see. Uh, one of the main six will get a love interest, maybe. Okay. <laughs> um, Daniel? Okay, first of all, I would like um, the princesses to sing, other than Cadence, you know, Celestia and Luna to have a song. Ooh. All right. I love Celestia. And um, second one, a derpy episode. Uh. <laughs> Dream <laughs> big. Somebody, because somebody put up a troll post on the Bronies meme base that it was going to be a derpy episode and it was already a troll post, but I have a feeling that it might happen. Um, that troll post doesn't happen to be posted on April Fool's, right? It was supposed to be an April Fool's joke, but... How do you say? You don't really know when the post will make it to featured page, so it made it to featured page early, and it was detected even before April Fools. Well, actually, okay. Anyway, um, your last prediction? A new opening theme. Never, never gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> a revised opening theme? Yes. A new opening theme? No. Longer opening theme. Already out. It's not an opening theme. It's a theme song. <laughs> no, they, the difference. <laughs> The thing is, they're not going to... Okay, here's the thing about music. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, the opening sequence, la, I mean, like, probably, you know, change the graphics. Like, oh, that so that will do. Thing. A revised opening will do. But a new opening song? Uh, no. No, they, they re-recorded it. I mean, like that, you know, they re-recorded it. Oh, that, that will happen. A re-recorded, uh, a revised opening, yes. Yeah. But a uh, new theme song? No, no, no. And uh, I don't know, like, I've seen a lot of this, although I don't think it's going to happen. Everybody wants a Scoodaloo episode. Oh, that will happen. <laughs> By the power of the Brodies, it shall happen. Uh, no, actually, uh, Michelle Krieber, I think the VA for Scootaloo. Apple Blue. Apple Blue. Oh, Apple Blue. So, no, who is the VA for... No idea. Oh, I'm derping right now. So anyway, she did an interview with EFR and she said that she recorded a Scootaloo episode and that's really interesting. She says it's 
different from her normal role. Mm. Oh, so, okay. yeah, could be. Anyway, uh, Emilio, your prediction? Uh, all right. Uh, first off, okay, I actually wanted to say a uh, Derpy Hoops epi- episode. Well, okay, sorry, I said Derpy Hoops. Here's the thing, I'm not just a Derpy Hoops episode. It's like I, it's like I am totally thinking that a fan-made uh, pony will come in. Mm. It's already come in. No, it's like no, no, no. It's like as an episode, like centered around that fan fan story. Uh, Milio, um, like a fanfic coming to life. No, no, it's not a fanfic coming to life, but inspired by a fanfic. Ah, I see. It's Get already it? been done, really. Uh, if okay. my little dashi comes to life, I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, secondly, I predict that that daring do will come out. Again. Daring do? Uh, yeah. An episode or the pony yeah. itself? The, the pony itself. Yeah, as, as in, Daring do apparently becomes a real pony. You know, I, I mean, has always been a real pony, but you know, it's like Rainbow Dash finally meets her idol. Okay, um, for that to happen, they have to do a Daring do movie. Yeah, well, that would be cool. I mean, no, no, I mean, not as in a whole show dedicated to her, but an episode where a Daring Do movie is out and Rainbow Dash is so jonesing to meet the actor. You know, like how we see Harry Potter and all that stuff, like, oh my god, it's Harry Potter! There'll be a Harrison Ford pony, wow. Um, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, there'll be a, maybe, maybe more references like my Giver pony. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so your last answer? Uh, your my last prediction? Last, okay, my last prediction will be chaos in uh, Cantalot. Didn't that happen already? Did it happen? No, I mean chaos as in they need to save the entire of Cantalot. Hmm. Like, it's always been saving Princess Celestia when you think about it. But has it always, has it, there been a case where they had to save Cantalot itself? You don't know, ma. Every time also you see in uh, Ponyville, everything is Ponyville, you don't know what's going on in Cantalot. <laughs> I mean, they got shining armor there. Up there for you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. It's like I want. It's like I'm predicting as an ep- entire episode centered around a chaos in Catalan. Not you know, not bringing it from Ponyville, bringing it into Catalan itself. Oh, okay. So you, so basically, what you're asking for is a Catalan episode, then? No, it's not what I'm asking for. But it kind of seems like they, they should do it. I mean, it's like Cantalot has always just been there. Oh. I mean, we had episodes where we see Cantalot, but we don't actually, I don't know, have it centered around. But the finale wasn't centered on saving Celestia, not at all, actually. Yeah, I mean, the finale was so totally something new. Yeah, I mean, of course, Cadence was more the center of it. Yeah, it's true. And the power of love. Cadence is awesome. And the power of love. Love is in blue. Okay, uh, um, <laughs> my my prediction for season three would be we get to see the CMCs interact more with the environment. Uh-huh. Well, instead of well, here's the thing: the CMC, unless they're going to end the show, they'll never get their cutie marks. It's gonna be a spin-off. Uh, like an <laughs> ultimate finale, you know. Four-parter or something like that. No, the thing is, um, here's, here's the movie thing about... A, movie A, please. <laughs> okay, here, okay, sorry. Here's the thing about the CMCs. They'll never get their cutie marks. Seriously, they they will never get their cutie marks. Unless unless it's like the ultimate finale of My Little Pony, then they'll have like, you know, CMC 10 years later. <laughs> no, I mean, they have to... Okay, um, here's the thing. If they want to give the CMCs their cutie mark, that means they're going to end the show. Yeah. Like, there will be no more G4 ponies. They have to move True. to G5. So, for them to do so... Okay, unless they'll do a 3.5, which I highly G4. doubt 5, it. 5, you mean? Sorry, a, a 4.5, I highly doubt it. Mm. I see. I mean, like, you see <laughs> characters like Twist and Featherweight getting their cutie marks. Yeah, that, okay, here's the thing. Featherweight, we got no idea. Twist, we can relate to her to a point... It, but basically, Twist is just there to say, Hi, here's how you get your guilty mark. Bye. And Apple Bloom don't get it. Hey, what's it? She's best feeling. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, they need to get rid of her, but in a nice way. No, 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 no. But look, look where is she now? She's not in the show as a main cast or anything. She's in fact, okay, 
she was with Apple Bloom at the beginning and we can relate to them. Not to be, for being the so-called like nerd look in the class. So it's to complete the classroom atmosphere. No, no not really. It, okay, you could say that. But the thing is, <laughs> it, they start off with Apple Bloom and Twist. So we can relate to them. Like, what are you doing? Why are you... What is so important about your cutie mark? Because we got no idea what a cutie mark is. But that uh. show showed us what a cutie mark is and how important it is to get one. So anyway, um, my second prediction is there will be an episode centered around... Let's see, who doesn't really had an episode really revolve around them? Scootaloo. Um, Applejack. Applejack yeah. has a really strong episode. Yeah. I'm going to say that because I'm thinking yeah, Applejack will have a... I want Applejack to have an episode revolve around her. And a song of her own. It, well, it could be. Two in one. Because like right now... It'll be like a, it'll be like a hold down song, you know? Okay, um, I'll take it back. I do want a whole show about Applejack. I want a whole show revolving around Big Mac. Yep. Okay, but here's the thing. We all think... Uh, we, when we all think about Big Mac, it's always like, yep, nope, and all the stuff. But Just be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, I mean, that line is stuff like, I want a whole show revolving around him, but... Having Applejack tag along I mean, or Apple Bloom. Hearts and Hooves is close enough, isn't it? It's quite revolving around him and Cheerily. Not really. It's the CMC episode, but he's got a lot of limelight in that. Um, no, I mean, yeah, I mean, when I what I mean is, I want more speaking roles instead of him go yep, yep, yep. And well, we see he has the potential to speak, but it's just that he hasn't had just, a he has to fall in love again. That. Oh no, no, the, the love episode. If he falls in love again, his vocabulary expands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bye. Yep. Nope. Or if, you, or if you get it very ticked off, you know, <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. Okay. Um. Here's another one. I want to see more towns. Ah yes. Because all yes. the towns they mentioned, right? Yeah. Like, uh, what's that Vegas reference they use? Hey, Las Vegas. Ah uh, yeah, Las Las Pegasus. Ah, Las, Las Pegasus. Pegasus. Sorry. Yeah, Las I want Vegas to. I want to see else. that, where they go there and have fun. But honestly, I, I, I honestly, my last prediction of what I want for season three is guest stars. Oh, that would be awesome! Like the one we know is coming back is John Delancey. Mm-hmm. He's coming back. But what I mean is more guest stars. Like where El Yankovic? I want him on. Oh yeah. You know who I want on there? What? Bill Patrick Harris. Oh my <laughs> god, that'll be awesome. <laughs> Awesome. Can you imagine that? Oh. Okay, let me one up you, David Tanner. Oh, oh my god! Oh, stop! Oh, god. stop. And, oh he'll voice, god. Oh and he'll voice, and he'll voice the doctor. Whoa! I love this. But you know, one person who I think should be on would be like Lady Gaga. Okay, that's random. Why? Because she, like, cause she, she actually said something about MLP and she also has her own pony in the Hasbro Generator. So I think she'll be more than willing to give back to this community. True. Okay, I mean, I don't mind that. But the thing is, if you're talking about celebrities who said they love ponies, um, we have uh, Notch who created uh, Minecraft and we have Gabe Newell who said he's a brony. So why not them? Bill Clinton. Really? Yep. Pictures already didn't happen. What do you mean? I mean, like, really? It was over. It was over a phone interview. You know, they asked. It was some American program where they'll ask you three questions, which you will almost definitely not know the answer to. And he got the topic of My Little Pony. He answered all three of them. Oh yeah, that one. And even because some MBS members have asked them the same question and they couldn't even answer it. Anyway, that went long. So, um, Emilio, you handle the next question. Okay, the next question. By Thank Jimmy you. Lee, any notable differences between the Malaysian and Australian pony? Wow, uh, I guess it's more of groups of people. There's the cultural differences, obviously. Um, and then there's the certain things that you do, I guess. is a lot more like what I see now because the Australian group, like Mount Vic one, which I'm involved with, um, it's a really large group now. There's like 300 members in total. 300 or more slightly. And even the meetup that we had today, there was like 30, 40 people. It's bigger than any meetup we ever had here. So yeah, it's a lot of people. And 
we see like a bit of a subgroup thing going on now because it's impossible to just keep everyone on track when you have a group that big. <laughs> Say like the MBS. So what does yeah. what does that subgroup do? You know, uh, it's all different subgroups, I guess. And the thing with the ponies here in Melbourne is that you have people who are interested in ponies and also those who are like there's an interlinking of that and the Homestuck fandom. Oh. So you have bronies who are big Homestuck fans as well. So that's something interesting that I've noticed about the bronies here. And yeah, just a notable difference there. So I'm guessing uh, there's a lot of crossover fanfics? Yeah, quite a few crossover fanfics. Um, one of the bronies here, he's actually... He's got lots of customized ponies. He's amazing at it. Um, wow. John Pickles. He's done a few like Homestuck... Uh, Pony OCs, so that, that's interesting to have a look at. <laughs> okay, so basically, what you're saying, there's not much a difference between uh, the OZs and Malaysians, then. We're all the same. Just except and... for our way of speaking and <laughs> cultural differences, but yes, other than that, we're the same. We're all the same. We love ponies. That's all that matters. <laughs> Yay! So anyway, um, Daniel. Handle the next the next question. Yes, sir. So last one is from Chia Yang. Will you ever finish that little Apple Bloom story you started months back? <laughs> <laughs> As mentioned, uh, new chapter is up. If you guys want more, tell me to post more, and I'll gladly write more. It's just hard <laughs> being motivated all the time, I guess, especially with uni and everything going on. So if you want more, I'll gladly put more out there. <laughs> So if you're in Melbourne, buy her a muffin. Yay! Cupcake! Okay, cupcake. Cup- Sorry. Cupcake! Or any, anything sugary and I'm set, basically. <laughs> or you can buy her a balloon as well. Yes! And then I'll play with the helium. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was topic time. Now on to the next topic, email time! Woo-hoo! So Email! Since we love your email reading on the last episode, Tash, why don't you take this one? Oh, yay! Fun times! Okay, so, email time. We have email from Muffy Derp again. Yay. Why was there not more emails? <laughs> I don't know. Dear Princess Norman and Baroness Emilia, or Emilia uh. as it is now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a girl now. <laughs> Tasha is best co-host. Oh, I really fought <laughs> <about> myself. <laughs> Thank you. Emilio can contest her once he upgrades his mic. Great <laughs> <laughs> complete. Seriously, the audio quality from Sasha's side is at least 20% cooler. Obviously better. Hey, shout out to you, Muffy Derp. <laughs> I can hardly understand Emilio since the first line spoke on the MBS show. And to today, I can only make our about half of his sentences. You hear that, Emilio? It's time uh-huh. to get up. <laughs> I'm too la- Tasha, the thing is, I'm too lazy to go to the studio. It's like, I, I pretty much spend all my time at home. Oh, really? I'm sitting in my studio right now. What's your experience? <laughs> okay. <laughs> continue, continue, continue. And Tasha is clear on the show. Emilio is fuzzy all the way. And no, he's not the pony type of fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I love you guys too. No homo. <laughs> love and tolerance, Muffy Derp. Well, Yay. thank you, Muffy Derp, for the enlightening email. <laughs> okay, uh, so Emilio, uh, prove him wrong. Yeah, that's right. You gotta challenge it now. Fine, okay. Here's, here's, here's a promise. After AFB, I'll get a mic just for my room, okay? <laughs> well, to be honest, right now you're sounding much better than last week. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when you dig your cup and you start finding things you never knew you had. Actually, yeah, it's true. I'm pretty sure I still have a lot, lot of stuff in my cupboard right now. And okay, you know, think, think about it, you know, like 5-10 years from now, you dig it up and Pinkie Pie! <laughs> Skeleton! <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, and, okay, and to be honest, last week's episode, I derp a lot, so I had to edit it really bad. So, last week's editing was the worst for me, so uh, I'm sorry about that. Aw, it's okay. You did your best, pets on head. Yay. <laughs> you edited it really well, you know. You edit suddenly, it like, sounds like, you know, we did this in one fluid take. 
<laughs> yes, the part, the magic of editing. Hmm. But yep. seriously, uh, last week's episode was really crappy, and I hope this episode, even though how drippy it went, when uh, when edit sounds good. I'm sorry, every pony. It's not you. It's <laughs> us. Oh well. So, I'm sure. I'm sure things will work out for the best. <laughs> of course, yeah, it will. Okay. Um, anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at show at gmail.com. You can also reach us at Twitter. I'm at Norman Sanzo. And I am at King of Cuteness. <laughs> I have a Twitter account, so if any pony out there wants to follow me, I'm at Tasha Irina. I usually give out hugs if you're having a bad day, Aww. so follow me. <laughs> Yay! And if you want to hear me complain about real life, I'm at St. Pinky, which is S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E. Oh, cool. Now I need to add you. Yay. Just just so you know, if you follow me on Twitter, there's a lot of FOMO stuff going on, so be warned. <laughs> and you follow me, you know, I'm like the princess of complaining. You know. <laughs> if somebody cuts my line, I'll start complaining. <laughs> well, if you follow me, you'll get to see what I'm eating today with the Instagram app, which I recommend you download it for free. You freaking hipster! Um, no, 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 no. Spotting if you're doing like for food. That's what it's built for, not Instagram. I don't Instagram care. Is fun. Yeah, Instagram is fun. Food spotting is nicer for food. You know, it's designed for food. Instagram is for you know hipsters. <laughs> oh, let me guess. You don't use Instagram, do you, Saint Pinky? Nope. I use Photoshop. <laughs> I have Photoshop too, and Instagram, and every other app imaginable, <laughs> which you know, I don't real, use. The real way, you know, just put, just print the photo out and distort it manually. <laughs> That's a real hipster's job. Oh, you have to hit for your own good, my friend. Montage. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that was episode number ten, and I've been your host, Norman Sanzo. And I'm Emilio Daniel with a very bad sinus right now. Oh my god. <laughs> and I'm Daniel Anthony, the other co-host. And I'm Tash, your guest for today. See you next week. See ya. Take care. Have Bye. a good day. Take care, every pony. Love and hugs. Only one problem. She cleans them with... Wubs. <laughs> Right? A roommate who does the dishes. Only one problem. She cleans them with... Wubs. Ugh.